can't have that. So I'm running on a plan to save America. We're going to save America. We have no choice. It's the greatest there is. We love it, and we're going to save it. We have no choice. And it's going to be saving it from the incredible destruction that's been caused by crooked Joe Biden and Kamala. And she's responsible because he wasn't responsible, and she never said that. He didn't know too much about what was happening. Maybe that was exposed during the debate. And yet, still, the way they took that away from him was not — was not right. It wasn't right. It shouldn't have happened that way. They walked in. They said, we're taking it away. They took — they stole the presidency of the United States. You can call it a coup. You can call it whatever. But they stole it. They went in, like, taking candy from a baby. And uh, can't have that. And she's running on a campaign of demoralization and really a can of — a campaign of destruction. But really, perhaps more than anything else, it's a campaign of hate. It's a campaign of absolute hate. And, you know, I said yesterday that uh, she's a vessel. She is a vessel. It's a very big, powerful party with smart people. I have to be smart. But it's uh, vicious. They're vicious. And they're perhaps even trying to destroy our country. Because who would want open borders where millions of people can flow in from prisons and from gangs, gangs, the worst gang members anywhere in the world? Who would want this for our country? Who would want uh, all of these transgender operations all over the place, like at will, even if you're in detention, I want a transgender? These are things she used to have. Who wants to defund the police? She's wanted her whole career to defund the police. She only changed recently. She changed on 15 different items. Fracking. Uh, she was against fracking at the highest level. Wouldn't even think about it. Now, all of a sudden, oh, I'd like fracking very much. But they change after the election in about two minutes, and I think Pennsylvania understands that. After two assassination attempts in just over three months, her lies and her slanders are very shameful and really inexcusable. And I can say that if I were president and somebody was being threatened, openly threatened, like they've threatened me, I would say, if you do that, even if this was an opponent, an opponent who I disliked, if you do that, we will obliterate your entire country, and it would all stop. But they wouldn't make that statement. They won't make that statement. And essentially, that statement has been made by other presidents, even concerning their opponents, as you know. Today, we're going to talk about the real char character of Kamala and uh, a person who has no remorse for the anguish she's inflicted upon families all across America. On the contrary, I have to tell you, Kamala intends to conflict and keep this misery going, and she's going to keep it going as long as she can, because that's the only way she can get elected. Uh, she's going out and only criticizing, talking about Hitler and Nazi, and because her record's horrible. Her borders are the worst in the history of the world. There's never been a border in the world like this. I always say in third world countries, banana republics, They'd fight them away with sticks and stones if they had to. We let them come in. Come on in. Knowing, in many cases, they're murderers, they're drug lords, they're, they're traitors in so many ways to our country. If they were involved in our country at all, even that, they're coming back in. People that left because they were traitors are coming back in. Everybody's coming back in. And it's at a level that we've never seen before. Criminals off the streets. And, you know, other countries from where they're coming are now setting records, good records for them, where crime is down 70 and 75 percent because they're taking the criminals off the street. They're emptying their jails into our country. And they're not finished yet. They've got — I'm amazed. I thought they would have done it by now, but they're — if you take a look at Venezuela, their crime is way, way, way down. Then you go to Caracas, and you wouldn't recognize it. You can actually walk the streets without, without being shot or killed or mugged. 
It's becoming a safe city because they've taken all their criminals, most of them, the rest are coming. They're all coming. They've taken their drug dealers and they've put them into the United States of America. Thank you very much, Kamala. I appreciate it. But she continues and she will continue this misery and her policies have caused uh, such harm and such pain. And the three great people up here with me are going to just discuss that for a little while about what's happened to them, how their lives have been shattered. I'd like to begin with the story of one mother whose life Kamala has utterly destroyed, destroyed this life. And we're talking about thousands, thousands of people in very similar situations every day under Kamala, open border policies. She, and if you remember, Joe Biden appointed her as the border czar. She doesn't want to use that term, but let's say we'll just use a different term. She was responsible for the borders, totally responsible. She never made one call to Border Patrol. Two weeks ago, the Border Patrol endorsed me with the most beautiful endorsement I think I've ever gotten. And in all fairness, they've endorsed me every single year, but they've endorsed me again, and they're uh, endorsing me, saying I was the best president we've ever had and the best president by far on the border. They said that they said that, and this is not easy for them to say, they said that she was easily the worst person ever to work with them on the border, most incompetent, uh, the least caring. Think of it. Not one call in almost four years was made to Border Patrol, like, how are we doing? I used to call all the time. I'd say, how are we doing, fellas? How's it going? Is it going well? And they're, they're great people. Men and women, Border Patrol, great people. They want to do their job. She didn't call them once. She released the two uh, men who murdered this woman's very precious daughter. Everything you need to know about what happened and the character, the character of Kamala Harris, you'll know from just watching this video. We had it done yesterday. It's very very quick, very easy to do, but it was very heartbreaking. We, we showed it in a room full of people, and everybody was just, everybody was crying. Some pretty tough people were crying. Uh, please take a look. Sunday night, I asked her to not stay up super late because of her coming to work with me in the morning first to do her summer school. She said, okay. I told her goodnight, and I love you. I went to bed, not realizing that that was going to be the last time I saw her. Hmm? We're best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going shaking again. <laughs> I woke up to notice she wasn't in her bed. I'm in my heart trying not to lose my mind because I don't know where she is. I finally remembered her phone had a location on and her phone was pinging just two minutes down the road right behind the skate park. I start driving to the direction the phone was being pinged at and I see a couple cop cars with lights on. I see yellow tape and immediately my heart drops and sinks to the bottom of my stomach. My daughter's hands and ankles were both bound. She was strangled to death, with left with no pants. And I know in my heart, she fought incredibly hard. She was not going down without a fight. We begin with two men. We're learning our charge with capital murder tonight, accused of killing a 12-year-old girl. Police say these men strangled her before dumping her into that creek. Both men were in the country illegally. Apprehended, then released by Border Patrol less than three weeks before Jocelyn's death. The men accused of killing Jocelyn Nungare are affiliated with the gang known for brutal violence. Kamala Harris was in charge of immigration in our borders. If we had better border policies and not open borders and not these catch and release policies. I truly believe this all could have been prevented. Under her being vice president of this country, my daughter's life was 
ripped away from her. She had her entire life ahead of her. Happy birthday, dear Jocelyn. My daughter is six feet in the ground based off of policies that she allowed to keep. Kamala needs to be back in office. I can at least know that my next child will be safe in this country. Thank you very much. So I know we talk about inflation and the economy, but there's, to me, there's nothing, nothing more important than the fabric of our country being destroyed by people placed there, violently placed there, as far as I'm concerned, foolishly, stupidly placed there. I think uh, what's happening on the border is the single biggest issue, and I'm seeing it more and more when I speak. I see it more. Inflation's terrible. It's hurting our country. It's just, just decimating our seniors. That's why I talk about Social Security. No tax for our seniors on Social Security, because they've been decimated by, they've been decimated by inflation. But what Kamala did to Jocelyn and her family is the most uh, heartless and cold-blooded betrayal imaginable. Thousands of cases just like that, thousands, in throwing open the border. Think of it, open borders, they come in from parts unknown. People have no idea who they are, where they're from, anything about them. They know nothing. They just walk into our country. And as soon as I heard they were doing that, I said, well, I know these countries. I know every one of the leaders of all these different countries. They're very smart. They're very sharp. They're very streetwise. I said, I know what they're going to do. They're going to open up their jails and just dump them into the United States. And that's what happened. They opened up their jails. And some of the most ruthless killers in the world are now roaming our fields and our streets all over the United States. I knew that was going to happen. And I would do the same thing if I were running one of those many countries that we're talking about. And not just the three or four that we constantly mention that are near us, all over South America, all over the Middle East, all over Asia, all over Europe, all over Africa. Tremendous numbers of people are coming out of Africa, and uh, they're coming from all over the world. They're dumping them at our border, pushing them across the line, and say, don't ever come back. If you come back, we're going to kill you. And we're stuck with them. But we're not going to be stuck with them for long. So Kamala violated her oath. She desecrated our laws, and she got innocent girls like Jocelyn tortured and killed. Anyone who knowingly sets loose these monsters into our country has absolutely no right to be running for office, let alone the office of president. No right. So here today is another great person, an American mom, Tammy Nobles. Two years ago, Tammy's 20-year-old daughter, Kayla Hamilton, who had an autism diagnosis, was found raped, tied up and strangled to death with a telephone cord in her home. Kayla's murderer was an illegal alien. MS-13 gang member among the most vicious gangs anywhere in the world. I took him out by the thousands, thanks to ICE. We're going to protect ICE. Kamala wanted to defund ICE. We didn't have ICE. We'd never get anybody out. They're tough and they're smart. Our border czar, Kamala, he was released into the United States to kill Tammy, please come up and say a few words, please. Thank you. Please. I just wanted to say that Homeland Security did not do their job. Health and Human Services did not do their job. The Biden-Harris administration did not do their job. 
If they would have done their job, made that one phone call to El Salvador, my daughter would still be alive today. Kayla was a very beautiful young lady inside and out. She was independent, learning to become independent. She had two jobs. She overcame obstacles dealing you know, with autism and was able to find a job that she loved. She loved animals, especially her cat, Oreo, and she cared about the homeless. She loved God and she loved going to church. And her life was just ripped from her three days after she celebrated her 20th birthday. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Tammy. And we will not forget Kayla. And she's looking down. She's very proud of mom. Kamala's cruel and uh, immoral actions on our border are actually disqualifying, in my opinion. She's unfit. She's an unfit person. And she knows this is going on. She never called anybody, including the 13 soldiers that were so needlessly killed in Afghanistan with that horrible, that horrible moment in time where our country was just lost all respect from the whole world when they saw that. That's one of the reasons that Putin went in. He would have never gone in, ever he wouldn't have gone in. If I were president, he would have never gone in. I ended his pipeline in Europe, no problem. And what happened? Biden comes in, he proves it right away, but he kills the Keystone Pipeline. Putin never would have come in. And he didn't, by the way, for four years. There was never a threat that he was going to do that. But he saw weakness, and he, I think a lot of it was seen in that horrible, that horrible period of time. She is also aiding and abetting the cartels, allowing vast quantities of deadly drugs to pour unchecked into our country. And remember this, uh, they now have an app. You call the app and you bring Whatever you want, you bring them over, they'll tell you exactly. Can you believe it? They have an app. And they have airplanes, big, beautiful Boeing airplanes flying back and forth over our border. They were saying, where are those planes coming from? Where are they going? They were loaded up with migrants. They're dropping them out in the Midwest. They're dropping them all over the place. And I will tell you, if you look at uh, Aurora in Colorado or in Springfield in Ohio, in Ohio, they dropped 32,000 illegal aliens. They tried to give them legal terminology, but it's not. Illegal aliens, 32,000 into a 50,000-person town. Beautiful town, no problems. And now they don't know what to do. And they want to be nice, and the mayor wants to be nice. His big thing is to get interpreters, because they, they don't speak the English. It's very hard to get interpreters. And he's trying to get interpreters. But in the meantime, they're taking up the hospital. So when people from Springfield would routinely be able to check with a doctor, go to a hospital, they're unable to get in, they're packed. The whole town has changed. And this is happening all over our country. Aurora probably is an even worse situation because you have the meanest, worst gang from Venezuela in the world, probably maybe as bad or worse than MS-13. And they've literally taken over the town. They've taken over large sections of the town. They've gone into the real estate business. They've taken over apartment complex. They took over a number of complexes where the people are paying them rent. They've become the landlord. Isn't that nice? And they're rough, tough people. And they have the latest weapons. They have military quality weapons. And everyone's saying, where did they get them? We got to get them out of here. We're going to get them out fast. We're going to get them out fast. So today, I'm announcing that for the first time under my administration, we will be seizing the assets of the criminal gangs and drug cartels. And we will use those assets to create a compensation fund to provide restitution for the victims of migrant crime, and the government will help in the restoration. The government will help in the restitution. Uh, but something has to be done, and we're going we're gonna to get it done. Kamala has also caused untold misery through her destruction of our economy. Our economy is not this. It's just it's like a fake economy. 
some of the best some of the best people on Wall Street are saying the economy is only good because they think I don't want to say this because other people have said it. It's not me saying it, but they think Trump is going to get elected. That's the only reason our economy is good. That's the only reason the stock market is up. Scott is here, I think, someplace, and he's one of the most respected people on Wall Street. He's been — he's actually made a very big point of it, that the stock market is only doing well because of the fact that they think Trump is going to win the election. So, uh, we'll see. But Kamala cast the deciding votes that caused the worst inflation in our lifetime. Maybe the worst inflation we've ever had, because I don't think they're — I mean, I know for a fact they're not adding all of the numbers. If they did, I think it's the worst inflation probably in our, the lifetime of the country. And uh, it's costing typical American families over $30,000. Nearly half of Americans now say they're broke. Think of that. Half of Americans are saying they're broke. They have no money. Two-thirds say they're living from paycheck to paycheck, and that's a record. Never, We've never had that. To that extent, we've never, ever had that. Millions of Americans are lying awake at night, worried about how they pay their bills, because Kamala wrecked their family finances, and she's done that. She's done nothing good. They have done nothing good. And I speak of Kamala, but it's partially Joe, but Joe's out of it, you know. Joe's sort of out of it. He's been out of it for a long time. Now she wants to raise taxes for the typical family by $3,000 a year. She's got no empathy for the hardworking Americans whose dreams she's killed and said recently that there is not one thing that she would do. Choked. I'm sure she could have come up with a couple of things if she really thought about it, because there's been so much destruction caused by the People don't talk about, and the news never talks about. They don't talk about, as an example, Afghanistan. But this is something that's incredible, because when you think of the numbers, 325,000 children are missing, dead, sex slaves or slaves. 325,000 children who came in through the open border are now missing. Many of them are dead. And nobody talks about it. It's, uh, I said, this must be a mistake. This can't be possible. When I read it first, when I read it, I said, this can't be. You're talking about take your largest stadium and fill it up many times. That's what the kind of numbers are. Here today is Michael Coppy, a small business owner who runs a dry cleaner and is struggling to get by because of what Kamala has done to his business. They've, they've destroyed small businesses in this country. Michael, please. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Mr. President, for affording me the opportunity and the high honor of joining you here today and sharing my small business story with you folks and the American people. So it's uh, a chain of eco-friendly dry cleaners throughout the Tri-County here in West Palm. Do you like having a P.O. box but are tired?